Hello everybody and welcome to this webinar called The Ultimate Secrets to Writing Your Story. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Joanne Fedler and I'm an internationally best-selling author and writing mentor. And today I'm going to share three simple but powerful ideas that will help you to get started with writing your story. Before we begin, I just wanted to check that you've downloaded the worksheets because they'll come in handy during this webinar. Also, please grab a pen and open your worksheet to the page with the first three reflection questions because we're going to get to those soon. All right, well, let's get started. If you have found yourself here, there is something that I need to tell you. Perhaps it's something you've suspected for a while, but I'm here on its behalf to make sure that you leave this webinar with this message you have a story to tell. Your life has given you experiences that are unique to you and you know that you've got to share them in writing, either for your own healing, perhaps to leave a legacy for your children or your family or your friends, or to help other people, even strangers who perhaps might be going through a similar experience and who would find guidance and solace in hearing how you managed, coped, survived, or even made just meaning from your experience. But I know how it goes. Maybe you have been resisting this knowledge for a while with some of these thoughts. Who am I to write my story? I'm not a writer. Who'd be interested in anything I have to say? I'm nobody special. I'm not a celebrity. I've got six Instagram followers. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too stupid. I'm too dyslexic. I'm too crazy. I'm too scared. I'm not educated enough. Maybe you think it's narcissistic and self-indulgent and you're not a selfish or narcissistic person. Uh, or maybe you just feel that you have no idea where to start because life has just been quite overwhelming and challenging. So where do you begin? Perhaps what's stopping you is that you feel you can't write about your life because it actually means writing about other people and you just can't do that because they'll hate you and never speak to you again or they'll sue you and you'll lose everything and will end up homeless and eating out of garbage cans. And you'll have to go into a witness protection program. Or maybe you just feel that you're just going to have to wait for your parents, your ex, or your siblings to die. It could be any one of those reasons. But perhaps you've got a very specific reason for why you have not yet uh, written your story. So if you go to the worksheet and have a look at the question there that asks you, what has stopped you from writing your story? Take a moment now just to answer that question and think about what is it that has stopped you up until now from writing your story? What is it? Something very specific, perhaps, that has held you back. Do you feel you just can't get past? It's like seems like some kind of resistance that comes up for you. Just take a moment to jot down any ideas that you have that come to you about what has stopped you from writing your story. All right. Well, I've heard the all of them, and perhaps some of them are go like this, you know. Um, I don't know where to start. What's the point? Who's going to care? Or I have no confidence that what I have to say matters. Maybe <laughs> my vocab sucks. I failed grammar at school, not to mention spelling. Uh, <laughs> What about, I don't know what to include and leave out? You know, life this is so full. What do you start with? What do you put in? What do you take out? Maybe you're scared that people will say mean stuff about you on social media. Maybe you're scared that it will come across as narcissistic. Perhaps you're scared to be your soul. You don't know if your story is going to be interesting to others, right? And this one, how do I make it sound good? Do I have to use metaphor and stuff? And anyway, what the hell is a metaphor anyway? Now, I'm here to let you know that everyone feels just like this. We all feel not ready. We all feel like we're not equipped. We feel riddled with self-doubt. We're all scared of failure, of confrontation, of humiliation. We feel confused. We don't know how to do it. We don't know how to start it. We don't know what to put in. We don't know how to finish it. I get that. We all feel this way. But the truth is that your soul or your life's purpose is stronger than all of these limiting thoughts, which is why, despite all of these anxieties, and you can see there are a lot of anxieties, you are here. Let's just take a moment to acknowledge that you have outmuscled these objections, these anxieties and fears to be here today. 
Now, I believe that a person's true potential as a writer is unknown and it's unknowable and that it is impossible to foresee what can be accomplished with years of passion, effort and learning. So maybe let's just turn towards the part of you that brought you to this webinar and recognize what a powerful force it is inside you. It is not an accident that you are here. It's not because you have nothing better to do with your time. I know how precious your time is and that there are a million things competing for your attention. Yet, you have made the time, and I just want to emphasize that, to be here. You've made the time to be here. Why? Why did you make the time to be here? Maybe you just want to jot that down on your worksheet. Why did you make the time to be here on this webinar today? What is it that brought you here? Just take a moment, try and connect with that part of yourself that can give you the answer. Why did you make the time to be here on this webinar today? Well, just to help out with this, I want to let you know that the reason that you are here is because there is a part of you that needs you to write your story. Now, I don't mind what you call it, as long as the term resonates for you and doesn't make you feel weirded out for any reason. You can call it your purpose, your spirit or your soul, your inner knowing, your divine calling, your heart's longing, your intuition, your higher self, your voice. We've all got our own vocabulary around these things, but it's the part of you that sits outside your ego, your personality, even perhaps your mortal physical being. It's quiet and shy. It's not an exhibitionist. It's actually a real introvert, and it goes beyond the ego that wants something. But the thing about this part of us is that it is persistent and resilient and some of us only ever hear it when we hit a crisis in our lives you know maybe we get sick we lose someone we love and suddenly all the things that we thought were important you know like shopping or botox or facebook likes or losing weight or renovating or owning the next best thing become irrelevant and we see with utter clarity that what we actually want what we truly want is to feel fulfilled we want to live lives of purpose and meaning. We want to find out who we are. We want to feel as if our lives matter. We want to make a difference to other people. We want to be ourselves, not what others want or expect us to be. Maybe we want to leave a legacy. Maybe we just want to know that we belong to ourselves, to our lives, and to this world. Now, I believe that the reason this part of us is so persistent is because it is trying to bring us into an awareness of why we are here. And by here, I mean alive. You know, this part of us is unchanging. It's not fickle. It is here for the long haul. It's with us the day we take our first breath and the day that we exhale our last. It's that ineffable, enduring part of us that doesn't age. Because at some point in every human life, we ask, hmm, what is the meaning of life? And it's not your bank balance that's going to give you the answer, nor what you see in the mirror, much as we spend a lot of time trying to fix that part of ourselves, thinking that there's something wrong with it. It's this part of us that steers us towards that answer because the answer is completely unique for each of us. We all each make our own meaning out of life. So maybe just take a moment you feel like it maybe close your eyes and ask yourself what do you ultimately want from life what is it that would make your life feel meaningful if you want to you can jot down whatever comes to you and put it on the worksheet what do you want from your life what is it that would make your life feel meaningful that would make you feel fulfilled it would make you feel like you you did what you came here for. So maybe when you doubt whether you can or you should or you're smart or enlightened enough to write your story, maybe I can just remind you that you have met the part of yourself that believes in you right here today. The part that when you fear that you can't is never going to stop reminding you that you can and maybe even that you must. You know, the beauty about being a human being is that every single one of us has something completely unique to share. 
even if you have low self-esteem, a lot of people do. Maybe you've made horrible mistakes in your life or you suffer from an addiction. Maybe you're not very nice to your mum. Whatever stories you tell about yourself, there is something inside you that is completely uniquely stitched into your being and your job is to offload it while you are alive otherwise you're going to die with that story inside you you will leave this planet with regret so your job is to find out what it is that you are carrying inside of you and to leave it here and the reason for that is because your story could change someone else's life and you don't need to have clown Mount Everest or survived a tsunami or been through cancer to have stories to share and stories that are important. Your insights about the way you see the world and how the world has touched you can, if you write deeply and soulfully and meaningfully, offer insights to others that can literally change their lives. You know, these days, people are starved for meaning. We, we also desperately seek connection and to be understood in our pain. And your writing can make a difference to someone else. If you've been through an experience, writing about that experience can help another person. Now, I'm actually speaking from experience. My book, When Hungry Eat, was about losing weight and immigrating. Truly not topics of great significance, let's be real. And throughout the writing, I kept thinking, who the hell is going to be interested in a middle-aged woman battling with a few extra kilos and homesickness? Now, what I want to share with you today is that to this day, I still receive emails from people in which they write something to the effect of, your story changed my life. Your story changed my life. How is that possible? Well, look, there is a trick about how to write about our personal experience so that it speaks into the universal experience. And that's one of the secrets about writing about ourselves. It's important we get that part right. And I'm going to share some of that with you in this webinar today. So before we go any further, let me tell you a little bit of my story, my backstory. Um, and it starts with really, I guess, um, before I became an author, um, because I was a human rights lawyer. I went to Yale on a Fulbright scholarship and I got a master's degree in law there. But the truth is that after a year at Yale, I knew one thing for sure, and that was I didn't want to be a lawyer. So after Yale, I taught law at a university and I worked in a women's rights organization. There you can see me doing my protesting. I did a lot of that. But by night, I would write. I was actually a secret writer. Writing was my secret love affair. It made me feel so enlarged and alive. You know, I'd come home after a long day of teaching law students and I just write late into the, into the night. I wasn't much for clubbing or drinking or going out. I just wanted to be alone with my thoughts and get words on the page. And I knew that my life's purpose was somehow tucked into my writing, but that it also had some relationship to my passion for human rights, which I suppose if you think about it, is essentially about making people's lives better. It's about helping people to live fulfilled lives. Human rights are an acknowledgement that every human being is worthy of protection, is unique and is valuable, and should be able to live their lives as they choose in freedom and in safety. And after Yale, I applied to a, a beautiful place in the US called Hedgebrook Women's Writers Colony on Whidbey Island. And in August 1996, I spent eight weeks there writing the draft of what would become my first novel, The Dream Clock. But it was only actually many years later that The Dream Clock was published in 2005. But since then, I've written 10 different books in a range of different genres, fiction, nonfiction, self-help, memoir. I've been published internationally by some of the top publishing houses in the world, including Random House and Hay House. My books have sold over 650,000 copies. My book, Secret Mother's Business, at one point was outselling Harry Potter in Germany very for a very brief time. <laughs> and my books have been translated into many different languages. I have had two number one Amazon bestsellers, I've worked with five different publishers, dozens of editors, agents, and publicists. I know all the ins and outs of what it means to be a writer and a successfully published author. Um, I am really one of the few lucky ones who has actually made a living from my writing. 
My latest book, Your Story, How to Write It So Others Will Want to Read It, was published by Hay House earlier this year, and I spoke at the Hay House Writers Workshop alongside Reed Tracy, the CEO of Hay House. I've even started my own publishing company so I can publish books that I want to see come out in the world. And we have our first few books coming out soon, which is terribly exciting. But what I love more than anything is to teach people to write. Here you can see me in action on different writing retreats and hosting different workshops all over the world. I think my, my real talent is that I am able to explain difficult concepts and unpack them. Maybe it has something to do with all my legal training. So that Yale Law degree has come in handy after all, thank goodness. So that is a little bit of my history. And I guess that is more than enough about me. We're actually here for you. And much as I feel like I have discovered what gives my life meaning, your job is to discover what gives your life meaning and why you are here. So I'm going to share these ultimate secrets to writing your story, which I hope will initiate this wonderful inward journey for you. The first secret to writing your story is that you have to believe and trust that you have something unique to share. I can't force you to do this. There's nothing that I can say, nothing I can teach that can actually help you to believe this. This is a completely inside job, right? If you don't believe and trust that you have something unique to share, nothing that anyone ever says or teaches you is going to make any difference and you will never ever have enough conviction to write and share your story. So it's really important that you make contact with this part of yourself and you find a way to believe that the life that you have led can offer meaning to other people. Now, what happens if you don't trust that you have something worth sharing? Well, my suggestion is to start by pretending that you believe it and to act as if you do. Once you begin writing, you may actually change your mind. I want to say this to you, you know, until you start writing, you don't quite know what the story is inside you that wants to be told. That is part of what is so mysterious and magical about the writing process. It unfolds from within you the minute you start writing, not when you think about writing, not when you imagine what it's like to be writing, but when you actually sit down and you start to write, that's when all these magical parts of yourself that you didn't even know were there start to reveal themselves to you. And then you get to witness and participate in that unfolding, but you have to start writing. So if you have a look at your worksheet, um, at the question about whether you have any idea of what you have to share that is unique. Maybe just take a moment and think about what are some of the really unique experiences that you've had, the interesting experiences that you think that you could possibly write about if you were to write your story. Things that have not happened to a lot of different people, or maybe things that have happened to a lot of people, but your take on it has been kind of different because of your idiosyncrasies or the way that you see the world, a combination of interesting factors um, in your life that has given you an interesting perspective, uh, whether that happens to be some kind of medical condition or some kind of addiction or some kind of interesting family structure or a different heritage, religion, anything like that, that you could use that is kind of interesting and different. Jot down some ideas now on the worksheet and um, you will be able to come back to those a little bit later. All right, are you ready to get to the second secret? The second secret is that your story is never about you. I know, it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but stick with me on this one. It, your story draws on your life experiences, but it is about your reader. It is always about your reader. And your job is to build a bridge between your experience and other people's experiences. Because I've got to tell you this, readers don't really care about us. Really, they don't. They care about how what happened to us can help them. And it's so important when we write this to keep this in mind. And I'm going to share a simple way of doing this here for you in this webinar. But you must always remember to hold your reader in mind. And this will help you because it will start to free you from this idea that writing your story is narcissistic when you realize that you are writing it for other people. 
you're writing it in service to other people. Now, a way that I teach this is that I say we have to find a way to share our story so that it sheds light into other people's lives. Our story is always an echo of other stories. Our lives are actually little stories, which are fractals of, if you want to think about it, the great story, the big story of all of humanity. And I teach people how to cross this divide between the personal and the universal, because otherwise our story can come across as narcissistic and self-indulgent, and we don't want to do that. So if you have a look at your worksheet now at this at the second secret and look at the question what is universal about your unique experience what is the human experience the great human experience that your personal experience illuminates how does your experience fit into the great picture of what happens to all of humanity all people how do we all experience what it happened to you, but just perhaps in different ways. Can you jot down a couple of ideas now? All right, are you ready for secret number three? The third secret is that when you write about your life, you must think of your life as a story, a story. And what do I mean by that? Well, you need to think of yourself as a character. You must be as compelling as any fictional character and be able to write about yourself as if you were a complex, flawed, sympathetic protagonist who wants something you cannot have. This is one of the secrets of storytelling. Because what this does is it sets up tension and conflict early on in a story for a reader and is a foundation principle of writing narrative and of how story works. And it's kind of a hard thing to do, I guess, to think of ourselves as a character in a kind of third person way, but there are techniques for doing this. We have got to be able to step outside of ourselves and look at ourselves in that way. Now, here are some of the more ridiculous and unflattering pictures taken of me. Here I am planking. <laughs> the other one is a, a photograph that my husband took with me with a lamb bone in my hand and a beer in the other. It's not a very common picture of me, but he thought this was hysterically funny. Uh, it's important for us to be able to look at ourselves and laugh at ourselves in this way, to find ourselves ridiculous, interesting, curious, complex, difficult. Um, all of these things make us into interesting, interesting characters. And you've got to be able to look at your life through that lens. Then, then you must follow the rules of storytelling, right? One of which is that a character must be different at the end of the story than they were at the beginning. Something has to change. Transformation is the key to any story. We don't want to see you doing the same silly things at the end that got you in trouble in the first place. And of course, you know, there is a structure to this. There is a way in which we structure our story so that we show this change. And this change, just to say the change or transformation, it can be emotional. It may not be a change in circumstance, and that's important to remember. So have a look at your worksheet and have a look at the question, how have you transformed in your life? What are the changes that have happened in your life that you could potentially use as a story structure where you move from one state to another state? Can you think of any big changes or transformations that have happened for you in your life? Maybe just jot down a couple of ideas about the big changes that have, that have happened for you. And of course, you know, I hope you will come back to the worksheets and work through these in more detail. But sometimes ideas can come to us when we're just uh, when we're on a webinar like this. And uh, you can always go back and flesh this idea out a little bit later. I'm going to throw in a bonus secret for you today. And here it is. Every literal event in your life has a symbolic meaning. And your job is to find it. Your job is to manage this crossover between the literal and the symbolic. The events of your life are literal. For example, maybe you were in a car accident, maybe you lost your job, maybe you became super religious, maybe you gave up drinking, this happened to you, then that happened to you. And when we write, our job is to figure out what the symbolic meaning of those events are. It's not enough just for us to tell the story of this happened, then this happened, then this happened because that does keep it in kind of like a little bit of a narcissistic loop. It's a bit like asking people to look at the photographs from our holiday. We did this and then we saw that and then we did this and we did this. You can see at a certain point, it can really bore other people. We've got to find a way of making it truly interesting. 
and relevant to other people. The relevance is the key here. Um, so here is a visual depiction of Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. And to some extent, I believe most lives can be mapped out according to the stages, the different stages of the hero's journey, you know, where we start off in the ordinary world and we have a call to adventure. Then there is the refusal and uh, eventually going to through an ordeal and finally uh, coming back which having changed, transformed. And I believe that the details of every life, of course, are going to differ. But I also feel like we all follow a certain pattern, the pattern of our lives. There are themes that I do believe recur in every life. You can go and look up a little bit more about Joseph Campbell's hero's journey if you are interested in, in this. So every literal event has, I believe, a, a symbolic counterpart, which in narrative terms is, is called a theme. And themes help us connect our individual story with this bigger universal story. So, for example, here, here is one example. Say you want to write about the important moment in your life where you learned to read. Perhaps you came from a family where literacy was not a big thing. But you, when you learned to read, this was a very important moment in your life, right? Now, that is interesting in, of, in, in and of itself. But really, the symbolic meaning of that might be independence, individuation, learning to think for yourself, becoming somebody different, because now you had access to things that perhaps your parents didn't have, or you were exposed to new ideas, and that became very exciting for you. Here are some other examples. In my book, When Hungry Eat, I focused on losing weight. But of course, the symbolic ideas around losing weight are about actually letting go and shedding baggage, becoming lighter in the world, not carrying so much of your history or your wounds or whatever it is that you're carrying. Perhaps you want to write about a divorce. So a divorce could have many different symbolic meanings. It could be about betrayal. It could be about freedom. It could be about reclaiming of the self. It could be about disillusionment. Whatever the theme is that you are exploring, you need to, to look for that counterpart when you are writing your story. It's not only events that have this literal and symbolic meaning, but places could have symbolic meanings as well, even objects and even characters. You can use certain characters in your life to represent certain themes as well. That's something important um, for you to think about. So have a look at your worksheet and have a look at the question about what themes do you think have appeared in your life? What are some of the themes that have come up for you many, many times in your life? Often we see ourselves in patterns of behavior, the same stories, we relive the same stories over and over again. It's almost like we have to relearn a lesson over and over again. Are there any ideas that come to you now as, as you're listening to this themes that perhaps you could explore that might represent uh, important tracts of your own life that you could explore in writing your story? Maybe just take a moment to write some down now, working this way with our own story is actually the reverse of what you would do if you were writing fiction. I've written both fiction and nonfiction and memoir, so I've worked both ways. For example, you, know, you say in fiction you were exploring themes of family and what it feels like to not feel like you belong to a family, maybe feeling like an outsider, like a black sheep. In constructing your characters, you would create fictional situations in your character's life to symbolize those themes, like Emily Bronte did in Wuthering Heights. She uses Heathcliff, the character of Heathcliff, as this outsider to this family. He's adopted. He's never accepted in his family, and this causes great emotional suffering. So in fiction, you start with a theme, and you then invent characters and situations that illuminate that theme. But when we are writing about real life, we actually start, we do the reverse. We start with the events in our lives and we then work out what the corresponding theme is that our lives seem to be playing out. So for example, if your mother died when you were eight, the theme is the loss of innocence or grief or any other number of themes that might arise from that. So we're actually doing the reverse of what we do when we, when we write fiction. Now, of course, there are many, many more secrets to writing your story, many different ideas and tricks to writing your story, especially if you want to write your story with the view to sharing it with other people. 
If you have found these tips helpful and you'd like to take these ideas further and learn how to implement them with support and guidance, I'd love to tell you a little bit about my new course, Seven Tricks to Writing Your Story. I've been teaching people to write for a long time and I'm always looking for ways to simplify and demystify the writing process. And I've noticed that what stops people from writing their stories uh, are a lot of these ideas we've already spoken about. And in doing that exercise, I isolated seven essential elements that I believe a writer needs to address when writing their story. And based on these seven ideas, I've created this new online course. And for some reason, I got fixated on the letter T. <laughs> so let me walk you through the seven elements. The first element and the first idea that we do have to think about when we're writing our story is the target. Who are you writing your story for? Your story is going to be very different if you're just writing it for your children or you're writing it for your family as opposed to writing it for other cancer survivors or uh, other people who are suffering from a particular addiction or mothers who are facing the empty nest. Our target, the people we are writing for, the audience, are going to determine so many of the ideas and the factors that go into writing our story. And it's very important that you have a clear idea who your story is for. You never are writing a story for everybody. If you think you're writing for everybody, you're essentially not writing for anyone. Because if you're writing for small children, you're writing for young adults, or you're writing for an audience more of your own age, or an audience of a particular um, religion or particular uh, gender, your story could be potentially very different, and your characters might be different, and the themes that you're going to focus on might be different. So it's so important to get clarity around your target before you even start thinking about anything else. And that's the first element. The second element that we have to think about is our timeline. What events of your life are you going to be focusing on? And it's important to create a structure of that timeline so that you can see the full sweep of your life, all the events that you think are potentially important. And what you're going to find as well is that things perhaps that you didn't think were important are much more important than you ever gave credit for. This is also important because a story has a kind of internal architecture and it's important for you to keep the reins on your story very tight. You don't want to be too loose with those reins. You want to have a sense of how your story is unfolding. And I know a lot of people think that when you write your story, you're writing it from the day you were born until the present day, and it's got to be chronological. And that, of course, is a complete fallacy. That is sometimes more a biography, but there are far more interesting structures to, uh, to the way in which you write your story. But it's very important for you to have a sense of the timeline, not only of the events in your own life, but of the social, political situation, historical situation around you as, as you've lived that life. So timeline is, is super important. The third trick is called transformation. And the important question that you need to ask, which we already looked at already today, was how do you change in the course of your story? Where do you go from and where do you get to? And here are two pictures which really, I suppose, <laughs> define the journey that I went on in writing my book, When Hungry Eat. This, the, the whole journey started with this photograph of me on, on my son's fifth birthday on the beach, where I looked at that and I thought, wow, that is not me. I don't even recognize who that person is. And then I went on a journey of transformation, which was actually a lot more of a spiritual and internal journey. But I finally ended up where I did this photo shoot of my back, of me from behind, a naked photo shoot where um, I had changed over the course of that journey. Uh, so it's important for you to be able to understand how and in what ways you change in the course of your story so we can see the character arc. The fourth idea that I teach in my new course is them. Uh, how do I write about other people? Oh, so many of us get stuck here. How do we write about other people, the people that have done things to us, people that we have issues with in our lives, people that perhaps we blame a lot of the, the difficulties in our life for? Well, there are. this is quite a big module and it's a tricky one. And there are lots of issues to keep in mind about how to write about other people ethically and in a way that does not get you into trouble or a whole lot of other things that we might be concerned about. The fifth idea are, is this idea we've already touched on, which is themes. What are the big ideas that your story deals with? Because even though we've got all these, these events that we will have outlined in the timeline, they all correspond with a much bigger theme, big ideas that 
actually make it relevant to other people. So some of the ideas might be change, happiness, who am I? It might be around identity, it might be around love, betrayal, romance. There are so many different themes that our story could deal with and often a story deals with many different themes and I, 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 share, a, I share a long list of themes that you can choose from um, in my course. Then the sixth module is called Transition. How are you going to build a bridge between the personal, your personal story and the universal? How are you going to make your story relevant to your reader and transition between the personal and the universal? And there are a couple of tricks that I can share with you about how we do this. And this, of course, is to make sure that our story does not remain just for us or about us, but has that more universal theme, the more, that more universal appeal, that people are going to care about our story, people are going to want to read our story because somehow it is relevant and we've always got to do this crossover between our personal story and the much bigger human story that our story is in service to. And finally, the last, uh, the last trick that I teach in my course is called teaching or takeaway, which is what is the message of your story? What are you going to leave your reader with? I truly believe that every story contains a teaching. We all have lived lives from which others can learn something, uh, from which we can learn something, often though that we don't learn our lessons. We sometimes have to live through many different iterations of an experience in order to get the lesson, and hopefully at some point we do. And even writing our stories can sometimes help us to define what the teaching or the takeaway from our life has been. And what is so beautiful about this is that it really does help us to feel like our life has got meaning. When we realize that, you know, as Gandhi said, my life is my teaching. That is what my, my, what my life has been about, is that it is a teaching to other people. And your life, too, is a teaching. And if you work through these seven steps that I have outlined here, you are absolutely going to be able to craft the framework of a story that does great justice to the material of your life. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind. Now, over the years, um, I have mentored hundreds of different writers and taught them how to trust that their story has value, to find their unique writing voice and get their story written. And some of the people that I have worked with have said um, things like, well, this is Lee who says, Joanne knows that all the gnarly, funny bits of our lives are where the true joy and richness of life is, and that's what we want in our writing. We don't want another cardboard cutout. We want real people inhabiting real stories. Joanne has enabled me to bring my stories right forward. And then Priya says, Joanne has given me the confidence to call myself a writer. I have learned so much about the craft of writing, but working with her has been a journey into myself, one of self-discovery, self-awareness, and being brave enough to write about my deepest fears and feelings. Now, Van Jones, who is a CNN reporter and is himself a New York Times bestselling author, he says this, your story can change someone's life. Joanne's message is a powerful reminder that ordinary stories of growth, healing and transformation are the medicine the world needs now and that each human life has its place in the great unfolding narrative of our planet. Joanne inspires hope and teaches each of us how to use our words to leave a legacy. Now, I just want to share with you something that I have recognized over the years, which is that most people won't write their stories. They won't. And it boils down, I guess, as far as I can see, to one of three reasons. Firstly, people don't take any action. They just talk about wanting to. They want to write their story. They've got a great life story to write about. Everyone says they should write their life story. Um, they wish they could. Their children wish they could. But they, they just don't do anything about it. Or they don't get any mentoring to learn the art and craft of writing memoirs. So people just stay stuck with this idea of I don't know how to. And we can really get stuck in that how, how, how do I go about it? Well, if one doesn't actually learn some of the craft of writing, understand the rules of storytelling, understand how to work with our life material, it, it can be tricky to work a way out of that. 
And the last reason is that people don't invest time or money or energy in realizing their goal. I think sometimes people think that because they want to write their story, it should just somehow materialize or they should be able to figure out how to do it on their own. But of course, this generally doesn't happen. Wanting to is a really important start, but we've actually got to take some action in order to learn how to do it. And so the result is that most people don't write their stories. And I want to emphasize this not because they can't it's not because they can't it's because they don't do anything to make it happen that's the problem and i want to say this as well to you you will never ever regret having taken the time to learn how to write your story and you will certainly never regret having written your story but the chances are if you don't you could regret not doing it and this quote by one of my favorite poets, Mary Oliver, sums it up. She says, the most regretful people on earth are those who felt the call to creative work, who felt their own creative power, restive and uprising, and gave to it neither power nor time. I'd hate for you to have regrets, and I would love to help support you to give your creative longing both power and time so if you'd like to stop hoping and wishing you could figure it out on your own and you'd like to be guided step by step how to write your story i think you're going to love my new course seven tricks to writing your story so let me take a moment to talk you through what you get if you choose to sign up and there is a very special offer for those of you who stay right to the end if you sign up, this is what you get. You will get eight video trainings, which is up to three hours of training, which takes you through the seven step process I've outlined um, above. Instead of you having to figure out where to start or what to include, you will have my proven formula or blueprint to help you get your story mapped out, both conceptually and in narrative form. Secondly, you're gonna get transcripts of all the trainings for those who like a hard copy to read and highlight. I'm one of those people who likes to read as well as to listen. So depending on what kind of learner you are, whether you are visual or oral, um, it, it will just, it, these, I think this is just gonna be an extra, an extra bonus for you to have the transcripts there for you to go over um, so that you've got them in, in all the different forms. You've got all the options. The third thing you're gonna get are these these story maps or unique infographics to help you see the big picture of your story so that you can understand how all the elements connect and relate to each other because these seven elements that I'm going to teach you also need to work together They've, they can't just be separate ingredients they've got to come together like ingredients in a recipe it's all got to work well together so it's very important for you to understand how all these parts are connected the fourth thing you get is a 92 page original workbook that matches the training and which takes you through the whole course with bonus writing materials and exercises for you to do. All the content that you create in that workbook is gonna be material you can use in writing your story. And you won't even be conscious that all along you've been writing chapters or parts of chapters for your book. The fifth thing you do is you get access to a private Facebook group. I really do love to create community for people who are working on their writing and this is where we will share ideas and I will do some Facebook Live. So when you buy this program, you will be getting access to this private Facebook group where you can ask me questions and I'll be able to answer those for you. And of course, you get lifetime access to all of these materials. You can do it in your own time. You can set aside a day or a weekend and binge on it you know, all at once. You can do it all at once or you can do it slowly over a week or over a month, you can do it entirely at your own pace. So I hope that sounds exciting for you. Um, you know, over the years I've mentored hundreds of writers. I've taught them how to trust that their story has got value. I've taught them to find their unique writing voice and to get their story written. Why not let me help you like I've helped so many others? Okay, so the value, the value of this course, well, the value of this course, which is the culmination of 10 years of my teaching, as well as writing and publishing 10 books of my own, is well over $1,000. I know the value that I've put in here, the number of hours that it's taken me to create this material, to come up with these ideas, with the infographics, the way in which I teach it, which is completely different from any other writing mentor. I know that this course is valuable, and, um, and it's over $1,000 worth of value. However, this course, um, it, it represents so much of my life's passion. 
about reaching as many people as possible, of facilitating healing and empowerment. Um, and I want to make it as accessible to as many people as possible. So I'm actually selling this course for 247 US dollars. And I hope this makes it much more within reach. That is actually a 75% discount on what I believe the course, the course's true value is, $247. However, I said that there would be a special offer for those of you that stayed to the end of this webinar. And so I want to say that if you are ready to start writing your story now, you're itching to get started. <laughs> I just want to make this a complete no-brainer for you. If you want to get this course today, and you sign up now, the course is yours for a once-off payment of 97 US dollars, which is a tenth of what the course is worth. It's a discount of $150 off the already slashed price. I do know what a difference this course can make to someone's life. It's something that you can either give to yourself or you can give it as a gift to somebody else, a spouse, a lover, a best friend, a mother, a sister, a colleague, any kind of gift. Um, I hope that this makes it just more within reach and that you can think of somebody, maybe maybe not you, maybe somebody else, that could benefit from this course. I think, you know, people are, are really tired of, of things. We're weary and saturated with material goods. And this is the kind of gift that will continue to bless and nurture the recipient for a long while to come. So if you would like to get access to it, it's really easy. If you want to get the full online course, and you can do that right now, you just need to click on the link here, Joe and Fedler, one word, uh, or lowercase.com forward slash project forward slash seven dash tricks. And then what you need to do is insert the special discount code that I am offering on this webinar. And the discount code is my story in capital letters. And if you do that, you will receive your $150 discount. And once you're in, You've got all the materials that you need to begin writing your story right now. So once again, it's Joanne Fedler, lowercase, one word, dot com, forward slash, project, forward slash, seven dash tricks, and then insert your discount code, my story, in capital letters, and the course will be yours for $97. The beautiful Persian mystic poet Rumi said, do not be satisfied with the stories that come before you. Unfold your own myth. I love that. Unfold your own myth. You can start that process of unfolding your own myth right here, right now. Imagine how you'd feel if you could write something that could literally change someone's life. If your story became the gift, the voice, the message they needed to hear in that moment. I believe that every personal story is by its nature inspirational. It's a story of survival. And sometimes when we're going through a dark moment, we just need to hear that someone else survived. It gives us hope. And that's actually how we end up leaving a legacy. To all of you who have stayed with me on this webinar, I hope you've gained value from it. I hope you'll choose to take the part that leads you closer who you want to be. Thank you so, so much for your time today. Um, I'm really so grateful to be able to share this course with you. I'm totally excited about what, what I believe it could do. And those of you who have taken action and bought the course, congratulations welcome. I am so excited for you. It's a huge celebration when somebody invests in their dream like you are doing right now. I'm so excited to be able to support you to write your story. Thank you all so much for your time today and I wish you all the best as you go into your life and, and make meaning and find out what it is that you have been put on this planet for and I hope that that is an exciting journey for you.